Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. We are starting the last day of this week. So we are in the session four for this um, for this week, and we are going to um, have just one more week to finish this course. So um, the last week, uh, I mean, the next week is the last week for this um, for this course, and I guess you are going to continue with your process. But in this case. We are almost done with this course because tonight we are going to end the week number three and then we are going to start week number four. Um, the past two days we were talking about um, the present perfect, but now we are going to change from present to past. So now we are going to talk about um, Simple past, I think that it is like a really, really easy topic. We need to um, remember all the information that we have about the tenses because it is necessary to um, have clear all the information that we have about the, the the structures about the way in which we are going to create sentences and we are going to have um, or write some examples. We are going to see uh, the verbs. We are going to um, specify some things and um, more information. We are going to see some structure that we are going to follow. Um, so it's this like, Like we need to uh, make this kind of review. So we are going to start with the topic that is simple past. So I need to, to share the screen with you because I have my document here. So we are going to start with this topic. So let me do something with this. So. Now, we are going to talk about simple paths. We are going to uh, talk about the structures. We are going to talk about the verbs that we are going to use. We are going to see some examples and also we are going to uh, see the uses for these uh, terms. So, we are going to write the specification or the general information about uh, the simple past. That is the topic. And then we are going to write some information. In this case, it's saying that the simple past, it's also called past simple, past indefinite, or preterative. It has some names, but it is the same. So you had different names, but it is the same structure for these um, for these uh, terms. So it it says that this one is a verb tense, which is used to show that a complete action took place as, at a specific time in the past. So it is talking that. We're saying that in this structure, we are going to talk about um, the past, something that happened in the past. And in this case, it is like quite simple because we are not going to have a like with the other uh, structures in which we are going to say that um, some action happened in the past and now continuing in the present or some action that happened in the past it may affect something in the future. In this case, it's just like talking about the action in the past.
which is used to show that a complete So in this case, the keywords, the keywords for these, let me see. Oh, uh, okay. I will send again the link because I don't know if you can access to the same um, uh, link with uh, the new information, but I will send to you again the link for this document. So don't worry. Okay, in this case, we have keywords. You know that the keywords are the important words or ideas. In this case, we have that the simple past is a verb tense which is used to show that a completed action took place at a specific time in the past. This one, completed action took place at a specific time in the past. So in that case, we are saying that it is finished. Para este, este um, vertens, sabemos que estamos hablando de acciones que se completaron. Por eso dice, completed action took place at a specific time in the past. Hicimos algo, se terminó, se completó en ese momento del pasado. No nos vamos a ver afectados en el presente, tal vez. No nos vamos a ver afectados en el futuro sino que mayormente son acciones que ya se completaron, que ya tuvieron su momento. The simple past is also frequently used to talk about past habits and generalizations. And we are going to see more details about that. So in this case, it says that the simple past is, but I need to share this one. The simple past is also frequently used to talk about past habits and generalizations. So we are going to see the simple past forms. And it says the simple past is formed using the verb plus ed. We know that we have a regular and irregular verbs. And in this case, it's talking about the regular verbs in which we are going to add the ed at the end of the verb. But we know that we have some different verbs in which the form change in past. And it says that questions are made with did and negative forms are made with did not. So in this case, when we are talking about simple past, we are going to use the auxiliary did to create questions. That is the word that we are going to use. So, is form using the verb plus ed. This is the first, um, the first type of verb that we're going to use with this uh, structure, that is the verb plus ed that we know that is regular ones. So we are going to write here, regular verbs. But it says that we have many verbs with irregular past forms.
And it says that questions. Question are made with D and the negatives. are made with did not. And we have some examples. And we have here, the statement in this, in this case is a positive. We have question and we have a negative. We're going to use the same uh, sentence to create the three forms or the three uh, structures that we are going to use for the simple past. And the positive one, that is our statement, we have you called Debbie. And that is the sentence. So in this case, we have this verb that is a regular one. So we are going to mark this one that is our verb in past. So we can see that the structure is quite simple because we have the subject plus the verb in past plus the complement. And that's it. We just need three elements in our sentence. Now for the question, do you know that in this case we have the information that we are going to use the auxiliary did to create questions. So in this case, we are going to change some things in the sentence, but it's quite the same. So we are going to write, did you call? In this case, remember that in this kind of questions, when we are using the auxiliary and the auxiliary is in past, our verb is going to be in base form. So it is not necessary to change the verb when we have the auxiliary, because in that case, they are functioning like the, um, the keyword in past. So our verb is not necessary to change. And we have the structure. We have did plus subject plus verb in base form. without two, because in that case, it is completed. And we have the complement plus the question mark. And now for the negative one, it's almost the same with the uh, positive, but in this case, we are going to add not, or did not. So in this case, you are going to write, you did not, or didn't, Call Debbie. And we are going to have the structure. We have subject plus did plus not plus complement. I mean, the verb in base form. Plus complement. And that's it. So remember, when you are using the auxiliary in past, you are not going to use the verb in past. Si tenemos nuestro auxiliar, en este caso estamos utilizando el auxiliar did, ya está en pasado, porque obviamente es el pasado de do. En este caso, si ya tenemos el auxiliar, ya sea en pregunta o en negativo, nuestro verbo, sea regular o irregular, ya no necesita pasar a negativo. Solo vamos a escribir el verbo en su forma base sin el to, porque ese es el root base. 
Igual pasa cuando utilizamos el do y el das. Cuando estamos utilizando das, ya nuestro verbo no necesita aplicar la regla de la tercera persona, donde le agregamos es y es, porque ya el auxiliar está haciendo todo ese trabajo. So, now we are going to write some examples about the, um, the list of um, examples uh, with diverse, different kind of verbs that we are going to use. So, we are going to write some examples about the simple past forms. And in this case, we are going to use the verb wait, that is our regular one. We are going to write it in past. Then we are going to use some irregular verbs that in this case, we are going to um, write the verb had. And also we are going to use the verb to be to create some examples. So we are going to have three verbs for these examples. The first one is a uh, wait. The second one is have. And the third one is the verb to be. So we are going to create uh, examples with those verbs. So we are going to see the first one that is the regular one. And we are going to use verb wait. We have wait. So we are going to use it with all of the subjects. And we have three. Eight. I need eight of these and three of this. So we are going to see here the positive. We are going to have here negative. And then we are going to have here question. And we're going to write all these subjects. I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. So following the structures, then we are going to use the verb. In this case, we are going to uh, write the verb wait in the past. Wait it. And remember that when we are using uh, past uh, verbs, it is not necessary to add the rules for the third person. So it, it is the same for all the subjects. In, this, in that case, we have the positive. Then we are going to uh, write the negative one using the auxiliary did plus not. Again, the subject, I, you, him, she, it, we, and they. Now we are going to write did not. And then we are going to add the verb in base form. So we have the negative ones. Now we have the questions. We are going to write did at the beginning of the sentence. Then we are going to add the subject and then the verb in base form. And we are going to begin with did I wait? Did you wait? Did he wait? Did she? Wait. 
did it wait did we wait and the last one did they so in that case we are seeing like very very simple sentences but in that case it helped us to understand the structure for this uh, tense so in that case we have positive negative and question with regular in this case regular verbs now we are going to see two irregular verbs that it says that many verbs such as have take irregular forms in the simple past um you only use the irregular verbs in a statement. In negative form and questions, it indicates simple past. And we are going to see this example with have. We are going to use have, and then we are going to use the verb to be. Now we are going to have an irregular one, that the verb is have. And we're going to do the same. We're going to add this one, three and eight. So again, we are going to write positive, negative, and question. And for this one, I will write all the subjects. Again, and in this case, we are going to take to use the auxiliary did. So in this case, we are going to write the verb in past, that is have, so we know that have in past is had. Then in negative, we are going to use did not again. And in this case, have is in the base form. The last one, did and not have. And for questions, again, we are going to write the subject and then the verb. I have, did you have, did he have, did she have, did it have, did, the, did we have, and the last one, did they have? So we have the irregular form of this verb. Now we are going to create this same uh, table with the verb to be. The verb to be is also irregular in the simple past, unlike other irregular verbs. There are two simple past forms was and where. It also has different question forms and negative forms. And always remember that you don't, you don't use did with the verb be in the past. So in this case, we are not going to use the auxiliary did for the, um, for the simple past using the verb to be. So in that case, we are going to create other structure for the verb to be.
So we have here positive, negative, and questions. So in this case, we are going to have the um, the subjects again, but then we are going to write the, uh, the correct uh, form of the verb to be in past. So in this case, we have that we, uh, we know that we have to, uh, form of these verbs. Let me see. Yes, in that case, it's, it's the same because you are uh, using the auxiliary. And in that case, the verb is not going to change. And in simple present, we know that when we have the third person, we are going to change have or has with he, she, it. But in this case, uh, the auxiliary is doing all that job. So in that case, uh, when you have that um, auxiliary, you are not going to change the verb. It is not necessary, like in the present simple. Okay, then we have the verb to be here. And we have for I was, then we have you were, then he was, she was, it was, we were, and they were. So in the negative form, we are not going to use did. In this case, we are going to use the same verb to be with the not. So in this case, I was not. You were not. He was not. She was not, it was not, we were, and they were not. I mean, I didn't write not here and here. So for the questions, we are going to use the, uh, the same verb to create that questions. So in this case, we are going to change the position. We are going to have the verb to be in past at the beginning of the question. So in this case is was I, and in this case, we are going to add the complement. In this case, we don't have the complement because we are um, just seeing the structure. So in that case, we are going to have it like this. Was I, were you, was he, was she, was it, were we, and were they. So in that case, we have the three examples and how we are going to use this, um, this tense in past. So now we are going to continue with the uses of this, um, this simple past.
we have used number one. And it says, complete action in the past. So in this case, we are going to talk about a complete action in the past that we know that is, um, it finished in that time. So it says, use the simple past to express the idea that an action is started and finished at a specific time in the past. Sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they do have one specific time in mind. It is not necessary to um, specify the time, like saying the name of the month, saying the hour or saying the day. In that case, we know that happened in some specific time in the past. And we have example for this, uh, this use number one, because we are going to see what are these kind of action that are complete in the past. So we have number one and it says, I saw a movie yesterday. So in that case, it's saying that uh, we saw the movie complete. Not, it's not like I begin uh, the movie and I did not end the story. So in that case, it's, uh, telling that we end the movie. Then number two, I didn't see a play yesterday. Then number three, last year, I traveled to Japan. Then we have last year, I didn't travel to Korea. Did you have dinner last night? She washed her car.
And the last one, he didn't wash his car. So in this case, we are talking about complete actions. In this part of the simple present, I mean, the simple past, estamos diciendo que la acción se completó, se terminó. No es como que lo dejamos a medias, porque ese no sería entonces el punto de esta parte. Es algo que empezamos a hacer y que terminamos, que no dejamos inconcluso. So in that case, it is the use number one. Now we have use number two. And it says a series of completed actions. And we have that we use the simple past to list a series of completed actions in the past. This action happened first, second, third, fourth, and so on. It's like a list that we um, do about the things or the actions that we completed in the past. So on. So in this case, we are going to make like a list. So we have the examples. So the first example said, I finished work, walked to the beach, and found a nice place to swim. It is not necessary to place or to write the places like it says in the specification, like first, second, third, and fourth. In that case, is making a list of things that you did. So in this case, we have I finished, that is the first action. I finished work, then the second one, walk it to the beach. And then number three, and it found a nice place to swim. Example number two, he arrived from the airport at eight, checked into the hotel at night and meet the others at 10. And the last one, did you add floor? Pour in the milk. And then add the eggs.
So in this case, we are making a list of the things that we did. In this case, you can see that um, in the last one, we have the auxiliary uh, at the beginning, and then it like affect the verb, because in that case, we are not changing any of the verbs that we are using in the sentence, because we have the auxiliary at the beginning. So the verb add is right in the same a base form. So it, it doesn't matter if we have like two times or twice the same verb. In that case, like we are using the auxiliary. So for that reason, we are going to use the uh, base form. So it doesn't affect anything in the base form of the verb because we are using the auxiliary at the beginning. Now we are going to talk about the use number three. And it is about duration in the past. So it says the simple past can be used with a duration which starts and stops in the past. A duration is a longer action often indicated by expressions such as for two years, for five minutes, all day, all year. So in that case, we have, um, we can say that we have a long action that happened in the past, but it begins or it starts and it stops in some time in the past. So it is not necessary uh, that the action happened in one hour. In that case, we can talk about action that happened in two years, in a month, in two months, and all of the things. But the important thing in this case is the action ends in some time in the past. So we have the examples. And we have, I live in Brazil for two years. Then, Shona studied Japanese for five years. Then they sat at the beach all day. They did not stay at the party the entire time. We talk on the phone for 30 minutes. And the last one, how long did you wait for them? In this case, it's a question with an answer. And it says the answer, we waited for one hour. So 
So in that case, it's talking about the duration of the activities or the actions that happen in the past but that end in some point. So in this case that I live in Brazil for two years, but now we are living in a different country or in a different uh, place. Then uh, this girl studied Japanese for five years, but now she and uh, study Japanese. They sat at uh, the beach all day in the past, but now maybe they have something else to do. Now, use number four. And it says habits in the past. At the beginning of the session, we were talking about the uh, specification for the simple past. And it says that this structure is used to talk about habits in the past. And now we have the use of uh, this um, tense that is talking about habits in the past. So it says the simple past can also be used to describe a, a, a habit which stopped in the past. It can have the same meaning as used to. To make it clear that we're talking about a habit, we often add expressions such as always, often, usually never when I was a child, when I was younger. So in this case, it's saying that we are using the simple past uh, to talk about things that we did in the past, but stopped doing. It's like the topic of the used to that we were uh, learning also in which we were talking about the things that we did in the past, but we are not longer doing in the present. In this case, we are going to use this kind of words or expressions to let people know that we are talking about something and that happened in the past. We have always, we have often, we have usually, never, when I was a child, When I was younger, so in that case, we are going to use that expressions to talk about that, that past events. So we have the examples. And we have here, I studied French when I was a child. Then we have, he played the violin. Next one, he didn't play the piano. Did you play a musical instrument when you were a kid?
That's one. She worked at the movie theater after school. They never went to school. They always skipped class. So here we have the examples for the habits or the best habits that we uh, perform in the past that we no longer do in the present because it's uh, the same with the other uh, uses in which we are talking about the action that is stopped in some point in the, um, the past. Now we have the use number four, I mean, use number five. And it's about past facts or generalization. So in this case, we are talking about that in this um, in this use is uh, to talk about or to describe past facts or generalization which are no longer true. It's almost the same with the number four and with the use two because we are talking about something that uh, happened, but in this case, it's not like a reality in our present, something that we did in the past and it stayed in the past. And maybe it's something like we did because we were uh, children or because we were studying at school or something like that. But in this case, it's, it's kind of, um, it's a like with the, the number four and with the use two. So we are going to see the examples. So we have, she was shy as a child, but now she is very outgoing. So in this case, talking that this uh, person uh, was shy, but now mm, she changed some things and now she is very outgoing and like to establish a relationship with others. Then we have number two, he didn't like tomatoes before. Then we have, did you live in Texas when you were a kid? And the last one, people pay. 
much more to make cell phone calls in the past. So we have here the five uses of the uh, simple present. So now we know that in this case, when we are using the simple past, we are just talking about the uh, completed actions only. In that case, we cannot use actions that um, are like not completed and we are expecting to end at that action because it is not like the, the main point of uh, this tense. In this case, it's just to talk about completed action in the past to create a list of actions. Um, also, we are going to, it's like using the use to, but in this case, we are not using a JS structure for the use to. In this case, it's also using the uh, simple uh, uh, past to talk about the things that we did in the past, we are not longer doing, or something that is no longer true for us. So in that case, we have the five um, uses of the, present, the, the simple past. And on Monday, we are going to talk about some tips to use the uh, simple past and more information about that structure. Now we are going to end the session. Uh, we are going to see each other on Monday, that is the last week for this course. So have a good, a good night and have a really good uh, weekend. So we are going to see each other and I will send to you the link of this uh, document again uh, with the uh, complete information that we are studying this uh, or those um, weeks. So, bye bye and have a really good night. Have a nice weekend, teacher. Good night. Estoy